Kayla and Donnie Thompson live in the suburban town of White City in Saskatchewan, Canada. They have three young children. Our oldest is Macy. She is six years old. Our middle child is Caden. He is four. And then there's Kyler. He is 13 months, and he is into everything. Kyler is a very curious kid. He gets into everything and anything. Donnie works at a car dealership while Kayla stays home with the kids. I'm more of the strict mom role, and he's still the fun, you know, dad comes home and, you know, he plays and jokes around, you know, and then I'm on the other side. So we kind of balance each other out that way. We're both family oriented and uh, just enjoyed each other's company. It's a Saturday afternoon in autumn. Kayla is out, and Donnie is home with the children. I was at home watching the kids. I had just come into the kitchen for uh, a minute, not even a minute, and Kyler had come out of the bedroom, and it looked like he was chewing on something or had something in his mouth. But when I went to check, there was nothing there. And so Kyler and the kids had went back to playing. I didn't think that much of it. A few hours later, Donnie gets Kyler ready for his afternoon nap. I put him on my shoulder. I was rocking him to sleep, and he was drooling a fair amount. I just uh, assumed that it was him teething. He fell asleep. I put Kyler in the crib. But then, the toddler does something unexpected. He curled up into like the fetal position. It's not the normal way that he would sleep. I felt a little concerned with him laying that way. It just looked odd that he was in the fetal position. Donnie leaves Kyler sleeping in his crib and goes back downstairs. But then his paternal instincts kick in. After about a, I don't even know if it was a half an hour, I. Uh, went in and checked on him because something just didn't feel right. And then I found Kyler, he was breathing abnormally. And he had puked a little bit. I was worried that something was wrong, but I, I didn't know what. I took him to the bathroom right away. But as Donnie prepares to clean him up, something else happens. When I set him on the counter, he was gasping for air. It was like a <sighs> So then I called Kayla in a panic. Kayla takes the call from her husband. He said that Kyler just wasn't feeling himself. And I could hear him in the background. You could hear the breaths getting louder and louder and like him struggling. And that's what got me worried. And I said, well, I'll come home. Just don't do anything. And I said, I'll, I'll come home right now. When she arrives, she finds Donnie with Kyler by the front door. She was very surprised, and she grabbed him right away. He's starting to cry and getting upset and wondering what was going on. And you could see the fear in his eyes as well. Kyler was getting worse and worse by the minute. And you could hear the heaving, like the deep breaths, like something was closing up. That's when panic kicked in, and we ran. We ran to the vehicle and jumped in and took off to the hospital. It's a 15-mile trip. I was in the front passenger side and just held Kyler in my arms. Kyler just looked tired, and he had his head down. He was struggling for each breath, and it was getting louder and louder, like a gulping for air. On the way in, it was getting worse and worse. We're about 25 minutes from the hospital, and I'm sure we made it in 12. When they arrive, Kyler's condition is critical. I basically ran in. I said, baby, not breathing. We had nurses and doctors running at us. And we laid Kyler down on the table. Doctors assess Kyler and come to an immediate conclusion. They did the usual tests, like the temperature and the blood pressure, and looked for any signs of what was wrong. 
They figured he might be having an allergic reaction, so they gave him some medicine to open his airway because they figured that it was closing up and that was why he was short of breath. And when they said allergic reaction, in a way, I was like, well, okay, we can fix this. This is, you know, temporary. But the allergy medication has no effect. It was just getting worse instead of better. He was gasping for air. So one of the things they had tried was putting an oxygen mask on him. That didn't change his breathing or didn't help at all. The beeping on the monitor started to go dangerously low, which meant that his oxygen levels was depleting. He was still struggling. And I was kind of getting frustrated, like, what else can we do? What, what are we not doing? Why is he still like this? To keep Kyler breathing, doctors insert an oxygen tube down his airway. It was very shocking. It's not something that you see very often. We were just hoping that they could control his breathing. One doctor has suggested maybe that he was getting croup, and, and that was closing up his lungs. Croup is an infection that causes the vocal cords to swell, making it difficult to breathe. It is most common in small children. I was very worried. I've heard kids dying from croup. To confirm this hypothesis, doctors send Kyler for an x-ray of his chest. Kayla and Donnie wait nervously. We were basically pacing back and forth, wondering what's going on, you know, checking the time. Why is it taking so long? Donnie was really upset. I was very worried, scared, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Doctors finally return to the waiting couple. What the scan shows changes everything. They thought they saw a coin lodged in his throat. They told us it would be a simple procedure. They would put him under and basically just take the coin out. Well, his breathing was under control, and we finally found out what the problem was. It was a lot of relief. Doctors take Kyler in for what they believe will be a short procedure. For an hour and a half, doctors operate, leaving Kayla and Donnie to grow anxious. The surgeon came out and he looked at us and said, this isn't good. He was holding what we thought was a coin and he showed us and he said, this is a battery. This went from bad to like, really bad. Who knows what kind of damage a battery can do? And at that point, you're thinking, again, the worst. For eight hours, a quarter-sized button battery has been lodged in Kyler's throat. Surrounded by bodily fluids, the battery began conducting electricity and generating poisonous chemicals. The chemicals burned through the flesh, causing the swelling in Kyler's throat that nearly suffocated him. The doctor said that he got the battery out, but there was still another problem. The damage was serious, just something that you never think would happen to your own kid. Kyler wasn't able to breathe on his own. Doctors have just removed a button battery from one-year-old Kyler Thompson's throat. During the eight hours it was lodged there, chemicals generated by the battery caused life-threatening damage. Kyler is unable to breathe on his own, so doctors must perform a tracheotomy. When Kayla and Donnie Thompson finally see their son again, they are in for a shock. There was wires everywhere. There was monitors and machines, and everything was beeping. We were taken back because we had never seen anyone with a trach. And to see, you know, him breathing out of his neck, it was quite scary. He's not going to be able to talk. Is he not going to be able to breathe properly? All those things go through your head. I went into shock mode, and where do we go from here? And I just didn't think that this was happening to us. This could be Kyler. Like, this could be the way he is forever. 
It's common for young children, especially between the ages of one and three, to swallow foreign objects such as coins, marbles, and buttons. While adults use their hands to identify an object, a baby's most developed sensory nerves are in its mouth. So a baby's instinct is to put an object in its mouth, not necessarily to eat it, but to understand it. I've never heard of anyone swallowing a battery. Well, how did this happen? When I came home from the hospital, I looked at the remote and noticed that the back was pulled off and the battery was missing out of it. I was a little bit mad at myself at the time because I was the only one home. For weeks, Kyler remains in ICU with a tracheotomy tube in his neck. Then, Kayla and Donnie see a significant change. We had bought him a bunch of little cars, so he was sitting on the bed, and he went, and he was moving the cars back and forth, and he went vroom, vroom. And I think it was that moment when he, he realized that if he covered his trach with his chin, sound came out. He, it was just like the best thing ever, because he was, you know, he's making sounds, and we were just thinking he wasn't going to be able to do it. And from there on, he has never stopped talking. Finally, something's going better, right? After two months in the hospital, doctors finally discharged the boy. Today, Kyler is a thriving three-year-old boy, but the button battery has left its mark, and it's unclear if he will ever heal completely. He can't live without the trach, so as long as he needs it, I guess we're gonna have to deal with it. If he's outside for too long, if he gets too dry, he'll cough up blood. Fluid can't get into his lungs. But he does everything that a normal little boy should do. He screams, hollers, he talks, he sings, he laughs. He, the only difference is he has a tiny little hole in his throat. And we're grateful that we have him here, and we're just happy that he's here with us and alive. He's one of the strongest kids I've ever known. He's been through so many surgeries and still always has a smile on his face. In North America every year, there are more than 3,500 cases of button batteries being swallowed. The majority of cases are in children under six years old. Each year, approximately 13 cases result in death. To prevent children swallowing them, parents and caregivers should make sure that battery compartments are properly secured at all times. 